Hello everyone, welcome back to The Basement. So today what I'd like to talk to you about, in parallel to an episode I did not too long ago on the Atari 2600, are cartridge PCBs, but this time, this time, for the color computer range of computers. So for the Coco 1, the Coco 2, and the Coco 3. Now, this cartridge PCB was designed by Mark J. Blair back in 2013, and it's great in that it doesn't actually need any form of bank switch and technology at all. And it'll support anything from 4K ROMs right the way up to 64K ROMs. Um, again, you can use it for games, you can use it for applications, you can use it for pretty much anything that's available in cartridge format for the color computer. So, I got a bunch of these cartridge PCBs made up and I've got a few components I need to put them together. So why don't we go in around back to my little soldery area and we'll have a look at the PCBs and have a look at what's needed and talk a little bit about it. So to build a cartridge for your Coco color computer, be it a 1, 2 or a 3, is an awful lot simpler than you might think. I'll give you the most, the most basic scenario, the simplest scenario. If you wanted to use it with a 4 kilobyte ROM image, what you would do is you would take your 24 pin 4 kilobyte ROM chip and program it up with the image. Then you'd slip it into position U1 and solder it in place. Second thing you do is you take one of these 1 of 4 capacitors, which is a 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor, and solder it into position C1. And the final step then, if you wanted the image to auto start when you turned on the computer with the cartridge inserted, you would short the auto start uh, jumper here, which is labeled JP1. And that's all you'd have to do. You shove that into your Coco and turn it on, and presto, you're using the application or you're playing the game. If you want to use an 8 kilobyte or a 16 kilobyte ROM chip, you would use position U2. So they're 28 pin chips, and U2 has been designed to accommodate a 28 pin chip. Now, once your chip has been programmed up and put into position U2 and soldered in place, again you would solder in your capacitor into position C1. Uh, you would short the auto start if you wish for it to auto start when you inserted it into the Coco. But the difference is now, in order to enable U2 instead of U1, you would need to short um, the top two holes here on JP2 and also on JP3. Now, the reason that these, that these uh, jumpers exist with a few multiple positions is that the Coco using this little PCB can only uh, play games up to 16 kilobytes or use applications up to 16 kilobytes in size. So if you wish to use a 32 kilobyte ROM chip, you can in position U2. And then you would use, I think it's jumper two, to switch between bank one and bank two on that 32K ROM chip because the 32K ROM chip has two 16K banks inside of it. So you could program up each bank individually with two games or two applications or whatever, and then switch between them like a little multi-cart. Or if you were using a 64 kilobyte ROM chip, you could do the same one, you'd have four banks available to you. So in that case, you'd use JP2 and JP3 to switch between any one of the four um, 16 kilobyte banks available to you. Another thing that this cartridge would be fantastic for is to make a multi-cart if you wanted to use it as the base for a multi-cart. And I'm going to put a link to a video from AC's 8-bit zone up here where he actually, uh, he shows you exactly how to make uh, a multi-cartridge for the Coco line of computers. And this way you can do it without taking an older cartridge apart, really sacrificing an old game or an old application in order to make your multi-cart. It's a nice way of doing that. Okay, so here I am back in front of my Coco 2 and I've got my little cartridge PCB here all built up and I've programmed it up with a game called Clowns and Blooms. And this is an 8 kilobyte game. So what I've done is I've used an 8 kilobyte ROM chip, which is a... Uh, 28 pin ROM chip. So I've shorted JP2 and JP3 the way they need to be for that size of chip. And um, also I have enabled the auto start with the little uh, pin header here 
on the cartridge. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to turn off my cocoa, and I'm going to insert the cartridge. You'll notice I don't actually have a plastic case for the cartridge, so I need to shove it in this way, which isn't ideal, but still. Uh, when I start up, the game should start. There we go. So we've got clowns and balloons running, and this game is used using a paddle controller or an analog joystick. So I'll be using my little Franken paddle guy here that, that I built a little while back. But there you go, you can see that the cartridge PCB is, is working perfectly the way it should for, for eight kilobyte games, at least. Well, it's working for all of them. But um, there, there you go, that's that one. So what I've done also, as I've programmed it up just to show you one other game. This game here is called Farfall and it's a 16 kilobyte game and uh, it's a very simple game actually it's just it's just played using two buttons to go left and right and the idea is if you fall well you need to fall but you need to fall on a ledge that's pretty much the idea i suppose it's it's the opposite of doodle jump really but um the reason i wanted to show you this is it's actually a game that i found that's in color on my on my pal version of the coco and uh, one other interesting little thing about it is that it also has speech. If I manage to get a high score, I'll just turn up the volume so you can hear it. But so there you go. That's far fall. But um, that's games and stuff. If you want to use those with the cartridge. But what I've actually been using my cartridge PCB for was for HDB DOS. And it's come in very, very handy because um, any of you that are aware of DriveWire, if you aren't, I'll put a link to a video on it and you can find out what all that is. But um, DriveWire, as I had been using it, in order to get the Coco ready so that it can speak to a PC, you need to load a program on it. And you, I was doing that using a WAV file, which took about a minute to get across to the Coco. And then I could use DriveWire. But then if I wanted to change the game or whatever I was using, I had to reset the Coco and I had to go through that minute of loading software again. Now the beauty of this cartridge based way is that HDB DOS is available in a ROM file that can be programmed onto a ROM chip and put into a cartridge. So you always have the Coco ready to use DriveWire as long as the cartridge is inserted. And uh, the other advantage of it is with some games, games that take up the full memory inside in the Coco. What they would do is they'd load up fine news and driveware, but they would effectively overwrite HDB DOS. And then if those games needed to access the disk again, because there was no version of DOS on the Coco because it had been overwritten by the game, it'd crash. So you effectively couldn't play some of those games. Popeye is an example of that. Or it wasn't Popeye, it was Sailor Man, was what it was called on, on the Coco. Uh, that was one that didn't work with driveware that way. But using it with the cartridge here has solved all those problems. And I'm going to show you uh, the way I got around this whole cartridge not, not having a plastic cover, being a bit fragile and could break your cocoa type thing if you hit off it or anything thing as well. So um, yeah, I'll show you the way I got around that. And what we'll do is I'll give you a little demonstration with driveware using it. And that's pretty much a wrap on it after that. So I'll change the camera around and we'll get to it. Okay, so <laughs> now just to show you what I've done to transform my Coco 2 into a kind of a permanent driveware machine really in a way is I've taken my cartridge PCB without any kind of plastic cover or anything and I've programmed it with HDB DOS 1.5. Now what I decided to do then was to open up my Coco computer, just take off the top cover like this, and it needs to go in to the uh, to the slot here. But I decided what I'd do was, I wouldn't put it in this way because it was exposed and you could knock against it or damage it in some way or whatever. So the simplest way is just to remove this door just a small bit like that, and then you can slide in your cartridge, just nice and simply in like that. And you can replace the door in a way that it won't open or it won't actually close. Now you're not damaging anything by doing this and it's completely reversible. So there we go. 
that door is now wedged in place between the the cocoa itself and the cartridge so it's it's not actually bulging or anything there's no there's no pressure on it one way or the other there's no pressure on the cartridge pcb and uh, the cartridge pcb isn't pushing back it's just there it's holding everything in place now granted if it got a good knock uh, it would damage the connector but as it is it's safer than just having it in there the whole time afterwards all you need to do is screw your cover back in place once it's, it's put back on top of course now it doesn't want to go on top there we go once it's back on top and i'll show you now i just move up to the screen here and i will power on and what we have is HDB DOS 1.5 drive wire 3 for the Coco 2. And I can immediately, if I just move the camera around here, and I start up drive wire. Okay, so there we go, a little bit oh. of Murphy's Law. Just before I started making the video, Java decided to update on my Linux system. So I ended up with Java 15 or something, and driver will only work with Java 8, so it wouldn't start for me. But anyway, I'm after resolving that. So here we are. I've got driver 4 running on my PC. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to try out Sailor Man, because that's the game we were talking about. The one that wasn't working properly before. So all I need to do is turn on me Coco, and it should start up with the HDB DOS 1.5 there. Now I can type there and it should show me what's on that disk there without having to do any kind of loading of WAV files or anything. And now I can run Sailor. And there we go. It's loading Pop A the Sailor straight away. No trouble at all to it. So you can see there, I don't know if you can see on the screen or not, but the disk is accessing and it's feeding data to the Coca to the Coco via the Bitbanger port at the back of it. And uh, it's pretty much behaving as if it were accessing a disk drive. So again, this is one of those games that is in monochrome on the on the PAL version. But I hit enter and it asked me to hit enter once more. Now, usually at this point, it'll be after crashing with the uh, with the WAV file. And there we are. I can play away. I can play away on, on Sailor Man. No trouble at all. There we go. Try to punch Pluto and I get punched punch myself. But there you go. That's, um, that's what I've been using this little cartridge for. So it works out as a great little thing. Well, so there you go. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope that you find it in some way useful to you. Um, if you've got a Coco and you're using DriveWire and you're still using the old WAV files or whatever, it definitely, it definitely is a heck of an improvement on that. And just for messing around with, uh, with ROMs and that kind of thing on the Coco computers, or if there's, like I say, a multi-cart you want to build, it serves as a great, great base for that. Um, yeah, so it's it's a nice little project. It's a nice little thing to fool around with. So I'm going to leave you at that. I hope you enjoyed the episode. We will see you soon for another episode. And in the meantime, take care of yourselves. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, talk to you very soon. Bye-bye.